Hi, it's me, Angela McCray, and I'm here with my sister, Serena. Yes, and finally made an appearance, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank I you appreciate for having it. Me. Let everybody know where you came from. Came from back home from Maryland, so I'm in New York for about a week. Okay, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate you <laughs> being here with me. So everybody, my name is Angela McCray. This is Uncork and Cultured. If this is your first time joining, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. And if it's not, welcome back. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about beauty and skincare. So I think this is a good topic, right? Yeah, I feel, it's fun. I feel like with, you know, we've been all wearing masks. And it's like now it's time for us to like focus on like getting back to some level of normalcy. And I yep. think a skincare routine is part of that. Yeah. Um, so agree. I want to have a special guest join. And I have a special guest stopping by who's going to really help us get our summer skincare essentials together. Right. And I mean, get it together. I mean, cleaning out our makeup bags. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a ton of makeup, but you got your two. <laughs> this, this is me downsizing because I travel. But any other time, I have a lot more. But this is my traveling essentials. <laughs> and so when we're cleaning it out. We're talking about like getting rid of all that lipstick that's melted at the bottom of our bags, right? That we're probably not even using during COVID anyway. Nope. <laughs> so, um, you know, before we, so let me bring in Misha. Hey, Misha. Hi, and hi, Serena. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, um, you know, one of the things I, I thought was interesting about having you on is, you know, like I said, COVID's here, you know, you know, some women every day are used to like waking up, starting out their day, you know, with a full face of makeup. And that's part of their, you know, ritual. That's part of their, you know, their life, you know? Yeah. And because we've been all at home, it's like this new normal. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? What do you have to say to those women that are literally like, I want my makeup. I want to look beautiful every day like I'm used to. Skincare, skincare, skincare. Like now's the time to just find your place with your routine. And once you really find a comfortable spot with your skincare routine, the less makeup you'll need. So now's the time to really invest in that space. And when you really come out of the COVID space where you kind of emerge, whether it's on Zoom or whatever, your skin will look more glowy and it'll look better because you're not having to use as much makeup. Absolutely. No, that's a that's so important. I think that's um something that we all kind of you know, understand is important. So mm -hmm. who's, who's here with me? I want some of my viewers, some of the, you know, people that are tuned in to, you know, let us, let us know you're here, you know, hit us up in the <laughs> chat box. You know, we can see it. We'll be able to respond to you live. We want this to be interactive. Yes. And if you have your phone out, make sure you follow Misha, make sure you follow her on Instagram because she will continue to share helpful hints as yes. well as um, some products that, um, you know, Will be great. Oh, Kim Yay. Lomax is hey Kim. <laughs> Kim Lomax is there. Oh, hey Trish. Hi. Hi Kim. That's my auntie Kim. Oh, oh. wonderful. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Oh, and we also have um Trish. Patricia is there. Trish. The Trish. Hey Trish. <laughs> she said you're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Trish. <laughs> we also have Lauren. Lauren Kears also joined us. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> this is amazing. You got so much support with us today, Misha. I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So let's. So I know. Um. Oh, Case. Case is there too. Case is up in the house. He said, "I'm here." Oh yes. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> and Lois, oh, Lois. yes. Yes, I have all the fam here. Love yes. Henrietta. Yes. Hi. Thank you for joining. That's so yes. nice. That is amazing. Make sure you guys follow the page Uncorked and Culture too, because I'm going to yes. have Misha back on again. So Misha, tell us what, what we're going to be talking about today when we talk about um so today we're going to be talking about the five must-haves. Um, for your um, skincare routine or things that you just need to have. And that that kind of um, 
is different for everybody. So, we'll, you know, that may change um, a little bit. We're going to talk about what is clean beauty. I'm going to really like it's it's so simple. We're going to just talk about that because I think it's so it's like, you know, is it vegan? Is it natural? Is it organic? We're going to really talk about that. And then we're going to talk about makeup expiration dates because those are really, really, really important. Super important. I, I remember the last time the last time I looked at my makeup <laughs> bag. <laughs> I think I had lipstick from like ten years at one point. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -mm. But I wasn't using it. Thank God. It was just <laughs> old makeup bags. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm a staunch advocate for you know, like not buying too much makeup because you can't use it unless you're a person that wears a lot, a lot of makeup. So, you know, I like to really empower women and give them that information. So when they go in the store, they just don't buy what they don't need. That's smart. And that's probably yeah. saved some money in their pocketbook. I right. have a habit. I'll go in the store. I'll be like, Ooh, I want this. Ooh, this is pretty. Let me get yep. this. And I'll wear it like once. Like, yeah. Yeah, I have my FOMO clients fear of missing out and, you know, and it's fine, but I'm just like, know how long you can keep it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it will kind of turn on you and that kind of complicates things. And, you know, you kind of may wonder like, oh, why isn't it performing the way it's supposed to? Or why am I breaking out? Or, you know, mm -hmm. so those things are important. So what would you say to like Serena if she was, you know, you guys were at Sephora together and she's just grabbing all her makeup and skincare products and you're like, OK, oh, now let me bring you back in. What would you tell her? Well, I would get to the bottom of what Serena's favorite thing is, like if her favorite thing is gloss or if her favorite thing is lipstick or her favorite thing is highlighter, I would say, OK, what's your favorite thing? If she's like, well, I really love red lipstick or I really love gloss. I say, okay, so those are the things that you can buy more of. But the other things, you know, you may want to, you know, like make a list or take a picture of before you buy it, go back home, see what you have already, and then make a decision as to whether you really want to invest in something else and knowing how long these things last because they last from when you open them. But what you have to remember is these things are already sitting on a shelf at Sephora, at Nordstrom, at wherever for a period of time. There's an inventory room and then they bring them out to the case where the customers see them. So you really don't know how long that's been. So you know, sometimes I don't know if you've ever gotten something like a powder or something and it may crack up sooner than normal. That's because maybe it's been sitting in the back a little normal. So I would just try to get to the bottom of what Serena's favorite thing is and tell her to, you know, maybe treat herself more with those items and maybe put, you know, take a halt on the other items. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes so so much sense. Yeah. One thing I did want to mention is that, you know, your background, right? I mean, your 15 years experience in the makeup industry, you know, beating faces all around D.C., whether yeah. it's, you know, for CNN, red carpet events, weddings, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, you name it. And then, of, of course, being you're a beauty consultant, right? Yeah. So you're helping your clients meet their skincare and makeup needs, which you've actually helped me identify a <laughs> new skincare regimen after turning yeah. 40. Remember yeah. when we first met, that was my big, you know, my big thing was like, hey, you know, I'm older now. I want to yeah. be more, you know, thoughtful and intentional with my skincare. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, I'm hooked. So thank you. <laughs> I mean, you were like so easy. You were just like, oh, I've been using Neutrogena for like nine years. And I told you all <laughs> about Beauty Counter. And you like text me two weeks later and you were like, girl, I see the difference already. That's what I like. And, you know, and it and it shows, I mean, you're glowing, you know, that's what I want to see. Well, thank you. I just washed my face, what, like 45 minutes ago? Yep. <laughs> I prepared it just for this. I wanted the glow just for this, just for yep. you, Mia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, I know we have a tradition, right? Because not only are we going to be talking about makeup today, but we're also going to be talking about wine. So, yeah. you know, our, my tradition that I've created here at Uncorked and Cultured is that we uncork a new bottle of wine from our wine collection. 
Okay. And today we're going to be uncorking the um, Frenchy Betsy Ross. Yes. And this is a white. Can I throw my bottle? Yes, please. There it is. My bottle. It comes across so much better with your beautiful background. <laughs> 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 beautiful thank you uh, Misha for doing that and yeah and one of the things that you know I like drinking wine right and a lot of the times I do it by myself mm -hmm. so I'm <laughs> glad that my sister's here with me <laughs> so you know so I can open this bottle and not you know feel guilty with drinking it all by myself the whole mm -hmm. time <laughs> we can both finish it together that's what yeah. we're here to do <laughs> right but I also you know will love it better by you know drinking wine with some of the viewers people that's tuned in so Everybody, I want you to grab your glass of wine and let's get to it. You know, today's wine that we're going to be talking about is Frenchie's Betty Ross White Blend. So um, first, I think, um, Misha, I think it'll be cool if we um, make our first pour. Okay. Um, but before we, we while, while we're pouring, I'll just give a little bit of backdrop about the wine. So this is a 2018, um, this is a 2018 blend, which is um, actually, um, from the north coast of California. It says it's a sparkling gamay, but that's incorrect. This is actually a um, blend of quite a few white wines. Um, now this, 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 this wine is actually named after um, Betsy Ross. You know, she's the woman who I think um, sold the first uh, American flag. So it has some significance um, in that regard. Um, and one of the things I do like about um, this wine is the character. I mean, I think the little cute dog. You know, that picture got me when I seen it. I was like, this is so cute. <laughs> but, you know, I think I think um, it has, you know, it has this character that, you know, yeah. kind of to you just because I think sometimes as women, we get attached to the images of the on the bottle. Like it's been yeah. plenty of times I've been, you know, walking through wine aisles and I'm looking at, you know, a cool design or a mm -hmm. cool image. And that'll be like my first, you know, reason to um mm -hmm. to purchase it. But this particular wine, um, it's from Sonoma County, you know, various white varietals. Mm -hmm. Um and one of the things that I like to do before we take our first sip is to really, you know, look at the wine, you know, kind of assess it. To, to mm -hmm. a degree, right? Um, and this wine, like I mentioned, it has multiple white blends. It's um, it's heavy on the Pinot Gris um, at 50%. It also has the, uh, a, a percentage of the French Colum Columbard, um, Palomino, Riesling, and Bonnier. Now, I'm not very technical when it comes to wine. I'm still learning, but hopefully I pulled the enunciations off. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to tap me on my shoulder after today's segment. <laughs> <laughs> so this particular wine was aged for five months and it has a really um, nice alcohol percentage at 13.5. And if any of you viewers are out there, anything like me, I like to have my percentages 13% or up. Nisha, do you ever uh, see yourself looking at the alcohol percentages before you purchase? Definitely. <laughs> I mean, only because <clears throat> I don't prefer to drink a lot. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it worth my while, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I don't like really sweet wines. So I do look at the alcohol percentages. So what are some of your favorite wines that you tend to um, enjoy? Um, red blends, Cabernet Sauvignons. And Pinot Grigio. Oh, nice. So yeah. this this will probably be a nice white blend since yeah. it's 50% Pinot Gris, which, yeah. you know, is similar. It's the same grape as Pinot Grigio, but um, I think it's from a, it's, it's, I know I did a presentation about this a few months ago, um, but I didn't retain all the information. <laughs> I think one is from France, one is from Italy, right? Okay. The Pinot Gris is French, is cultivated in the French region where the Pinot Grigio is cultivated in the Italian region. Okay. So that's the difference between the two, but I believe it's the same grape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so let's get to it. I mean, what do you, um, let's, let's look at the color first. Okay. Um, and just kind of like what, what colors do you see when you look at this? What does it remind you of? 
Hmm. It's the color of ginger ale. A oh, bit. okay. She a little bit. A little bit like her. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay. It smells right. very crisp. Yeah. See, I, could, I I described it as golden coral, but I guess ginger ale would have okay. been suffice. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not a wine drinker, y'all. But I'm glad you're open enough. I'm open to it, though. Well, thank you. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> so, okay, what are your what do you smell over there, Misha? Um, it smells very crisp. So it kind of reminds me of um, like apples or something, like crisp apples. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can see I can that. See that. Yeah, yeah, because of the citrus zest that I do smell at the end that gives it that crispness. Yeah. And I'm a fan of peaches. So whenever there's anything with a peach, you know, flavor or sentiment to it, I'm, mm -hmm. always, I'm always excited. And I do yeah. kind of get a hint of that, but not it's not very strong. Right. Mm, I love that. Okay. And so now I think it's time for us to take our first uh, sip. Okay. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. This is quite lovely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if what are some of the flavors that you taste? I definitely taste um like um it's I can taste a fruity you know, mm -hmm. undertone. I don't know what it is yet. Serena, yeah. what about you? What do you, what do you, what is this, um, what flavors resonate with you? Since I'm like a sweet person, mm -hmm. it is a little bitter. Okay. Like, let's see, take another sip. Mm. And sometimes you gotta like hold it in your mouth and just take a small sip, you know? Mm-hmm. So you can actually allow your taste buds to, you know, fully embrace all the flavors and the experience. Yeah. Be honest, I don't taste like the fruit <laughs> flavor. I taste the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> That's honest though. You know, I ain't mad at yeah. you. I'm mad at you. It's good though. <laughs> I just don't taste like <laughs> have a specific taste for it. We you know the lady that you had on said, you know, like just whatever you taste because everybody's palate is so different mm -hmm. she's like whatever you taste that's what it is yep right it absolutely now she did just have um a dip that i made a, a garlic and jalapeno cashew dip so yeah. that can also play a part in that right i mean you know your food also dictates the flavors that actually comes out of you know the experience as well so mm -hmm. i think you know that might have something to do with it like i know the last thing i ate was salmon with a smoky kind of like yeah. glazy. It's like I, I put, took some of smoke seasoning with um, some agave and a little bit of li liquid aminos. And I created this kind of like glaze for asparagus. And it was so good, y'all. And orange peppers. My sister could cook. <laughs> it was so good. And some blackened salmon. Thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, so okay, so we have a few people just out, out there um, kind of talking to us out in the universe. We got Samantha. She says she wants to taste. Ah, Samantha. Hey, Samantha. <laughs> I have like all beauty counter clients on here. This is so oh, nice. that's awesome. Amazing. That's a great support. That's a great support. Yeah. Samantha, hit me up. I will make sure that you get in touch and get you a bottle of this because it is really good. It's a good yes, summer. Guys, you've got to hit Angela up. She is so sweet and just so accommodating. She has like, I did not intend on buying a, a six bottle order and it's here. <laughs> so cheers. Well, thank you. you call her. Well, I'm glad that you're a satisfied client of mine. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, Anna, cheers. <laughs> She's also one of my clients as well. So, um, so Misha, I'm just going to put this back up here because I want people to make sure that they follow you on Instagram and then, you know, just kind of reintroduce you. Um, tell us about, you know, your clients and what you do with Beauty Counter. 
So with Beauty Counter, I am a consultant. I have been working with them for over two years now. And um, I am helping women uh, choose skincare routines and teaching them about clean beauty and helping women to that who are clean curious and some women who may not even know that they're clean curious to make um, better choices um, as far as skincare routines, like like maybe making a swap for something that is safer for them. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it be skincare, whether it be makeup, whether it be body products um, and empowering them to like, a lot of women are like, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on my makeup. So I'm teaching them. I've been doing a lot of virtual stuff and I was doing virtual stuff before COVID hit just to kind of accommodate women, um, their like time, you know, the, the schedules, limitations of schedules with time and stuff like that. Um, so I virtually teach them um, how to do their makeup or how to go through their skincare routine. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoy it. So it, it's, you know, I love to do it myself, but I also love to teach women how to do it themselves. Amazing. And I appreciate you teaching me because, you know, now I have an actual system, a, a yeah. skincare system, you know, mm -hmm. and next you shoot, I might be having my whole little, know how to do my whole face one day. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, okay. This is great. So, um, we're going to have, um, so I want everybody, all the ladies now to grab your makeup bags. If you don't already have one in front of you, grab those those bags, ladies, because for free 99, Misha's going to help us with ours. Okay. And in doing that, I'm going to bring in my good friend, Destiny. Hey, Destiny. Hi, everybody. Destiny Hi. and Shay. Hey, hey Shay. ladies. <laughs> how are you? I'm great. Yeah. How are you? Good. You got your, you got your makeup bags and, and, and wine? I'm not only one got it. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. <laughs> so, Misha, first, I know you wanted to talk about um, the flawless in five. Yeah. So, so the flawless, the flawless in five is um, a really quick system that we have through Beauty Counter where you can use either foundation or tinted moisturizer to do a really quick five minute face. And um, so you have your concealer, you have um, either a lip gloss or lipstick, um, either a brow gel or a brow pencil, mascara and a blush. And that is all you really need for a five minute face. So we're not even really getting into shadow and liner and all those details, but just for a, like a simple, modern, clean, finished face that you can literally do in five minutes. Those, that's what you need to complete okay. that look. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So, ladies, uh, now I wanted you guys to come on, but I also want you to ask, you know, any questions you may have for sure. Misha as far as like just makeup questions. Okay. Me personally, I have very oily skin. Mm -hmm. What tips do you have for people like myself trying to preserve their makeup? So, like, what I usually do is like, I, I usually like set a lot. I have like a matte primer, a matte foundation, matte um, setting powder. So, I don't get oily too soon and it doesn't transfer because that right. was that was like an issue for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I recommend is before you get to primer, mm -hmm. it starts with what you are washing your face with and what you are moisturizing your face with. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know if you want to share that. Um but that's where I would start with you because oftentimes people who have oily skin, the reason that your skin is you know, producing excess oil is because of the moisturizer that you're using. Sometimes you need something with what's called a humectant, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. rather than something that you know is um it's there are two bases you know in a moisturizer mm-hmm. okay so you can have something that's hydrating and you can have something that is more of an oil control but not oil stripping mm-hmm. so like you still need you know to be moisturized but you don't want anything to strip the oil but you know what i mean so it's going to all start there okay and then once you get that under control then you wouldn't probably need as much as you need on the back end in terms of you know it might be great to have a good primer but mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't need to do as much on the back end okay yeah and sense. we do have something you know for that we um have a, an alcohol free um matte um toner mm-hmm. um, so it's it's a system and um i have a couple you know clients with the same challenges i mean like your skin looks beautiful and that's the one thing about people that have excess oil your skin is always gorgeous you know what i mean um but i know that it's not fun when it comes down to putting makeup on and it lasting all day so you just have to get control of it on the front end and um this particular system is called counter control once you the people that i put on that I mean, their skin, they all tell me, they're like, my skin is under control and I can do what I need to do with it during the day. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Shay, Mm -hmm. Destiny, you ladies have a question before we get into um, what clean beauty is? I do. Sure. Um, I find myself buying a lot of different foundations as the seasons change. Yeah. a dark foundation, and then I have a light foundation, and then I have foundation in the middle. Then I'm trying to mix them together, and I end up before you know it, I have like five half empty bottles of foundation. Yeah. How do you suggest that we transition our foundations as the seasons change? So, you a woman generally needs two colors of foundation, so you need a foundation for the summer and the fall, so that's one. And then you need a foundation for the winter and the spring. Okay. Because you know how our whatever color we got from the summer begins to fade in the winter time. Right. right. You know what I mean? But it'll kind of hang around during the fall. So um, you know, I just say if you have those two colors, then you'll be good. But the trick is with foundation, is you have to have the correct formula for your skin too because what happens with foundation especially the tones um for us women of color is that they begin to oxidize so they will get darker okay and you know you're wondering like what's going on you know with this color so Um, if you have something that say for oily skin and maybe your skin really isn't oily, that foundation is going to act. It's not going to act properly on your skin. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to determine if you really need a foundation. I have switched a lot of women from foundation to say a tinted moisturizer. Okay. Um, because a lot of times you don't need the amount of coverage that a foundation offers. Okay. Now it's, it's obviously your choice. You might be like, no, Misha, I just like the way foundation looks. Okay. That's beautiful. That's fine. But then it's like, okay, let's find the right foundation for you. And you want to be with a line that is speaking to, um, you know, all skin colors. Okay, because if they have an expansive color range, then that means that they're going to oxidize less as they get into the darker ranges. Okay. 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 Thank you. I never even considered a tinted moisturizer. Yeah, because a lot of times we just want like that finished look, you know, Mm -hmm. we just want like glowy skin and you know, you don't always need foundation for that. But if you're a person that, you know, you're like, well, you know, sometimes I like to have like a really glam look, 
you know, but for every day, maybe for work, maybe you just need a tint and moisturizer for that. But for the days you're going out, you maybe want to have that foundation because maybe you're glamming it up a little bit more and you, you know, you just want to have that, you know, that extra vroom vroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So love it, love it, love mm -hmm. it. Thank you. So Misha, that's um let tell us what is clean beauty? So clean beauty very simply means that, and I'm just basically reading it off of here, but it means that a product is safe, it's non-toxic, and it has transparent labeling of ingredients. So you can see all the products that are, I mean, all the ingredients that are in the products just as you would a food label. You know how we can look at the nutrition facts and the ingredients like, you know, on anything we purchase now, same thing with your products that you purchase. Okay. Um, and the products are made without ingredients shown or, sus uh, or suspected to harm human health. All right. They've gone through safety screening and there are no mystery ingredients in the formulas. Okay. Now all skincare and cosmetics, even like your lotions and all that kind of stuff, they have to contain some form of safe preservation to maintain, you know, the stability, you know, of the product, but those things have to be safe. A lot of like lotions and things like that contain formaldehyde. Mm. And a lot of people don't know that. So that's toxic, right? Yeah. That's absolutely. what they that's what they use in the um embalming process. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Why would we use that in Lotion. stuff we put on our skin? Like I don't understand that. It's all about money. And the longer they can keep the product on the on the shelf, you know, the longer, you know, I mean it 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 it's economical for the company. The more they profit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So there are some resources that you can look into. Um, Environmental Working Group, the Skin Deep app, the Good Face Project, the Clean Guide. Um, you know, another thing that I've been really trying to tell women about is that a lot, a lot of brands still have lead in lipstick. So like your reds, your, you know, your deep magentas, your pinks and things like that, they are full of lead. And, you know, we do everything we can not to live in homes that have yeah. lead in the paint, right? Yeah. yeah. But we're putting lead on our lips and you're eating it because if you have lipstick on your lips, you are eating it. And when I did my research on this, I was surprised to find that your lips are thinner. Yes. So scale, like your skin is like, say a 16 in terms of thickness, but your lips are like a three to four. So they're very thin, right. which means that's going to get into your bloodstream a lot quicker. Mm. So when I made the switch, I can promise you like one of my looks is like the way I look right now is the way I pretty much look every day, even though I'm a makeup artist. You know what I mean? Like I don't wear a whole lot of makeup. Um, but one of my signatures is always having a fancy lip on, like a, a bright pink or you I know, love it. red, red, orange, or something like that. And since I made the switch, I have not compromised that. I, you know, I made that seamlessly without having to sacrifice anything. And this information is like at your fingertips. Like I'm not going to trash other lines, but I will tell you, you can look up on your own cosmetic brands that still contain lead in their lipstick and you would be surprised. So that's wow. like a simple switch that you can do for your, you know, for your makeup bag. Nice. Yeah. To be safe. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So I know so I know here we were talking about like we, we talked about shelf life, right? That was something that we, used, you know, felt was an important topic to cover today, because like yeah. I said earlier, like I've, un, un, you know, found makeup bags and, you know, found lipstick that I had literally since like college. And <laughs> I graduated a long time ago. Yeah. 
<laughs> over 15 years ago. So it was yeah. just like one of those situations where I was like, you know, this is an important thing that I think a lot of women don't realize is how right. long can I actually keep my cosmetics? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only thing that you can keep for a really, really, really long time is your fragrances. That's eight to 10 years. And um, the unfortunate thing I'll tell you about that is the reason you can keep that for that long is um, fragrances are unfortunately one of the most toxic things that we put on our bodies. So um, even the Etoile or whatever, huh? <laughs> even the Etoile, isn't that supposed to be like nicer? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> You have to tell me all about somebody it. Somebody hit me up in the chats and please correct what I'm trying to say because I know there's two different types of you know fragrances you can get. You can get the oh, regular you can have the old day toilet versus yes. the old day <laughs> What did I say, y'all? I forgot. Girl, I thought you were saying <laughs> a certain <laughs> uh, like a new body fragrance. <laughs> and that 13.5 is getting to you already. Yes, girl, because I'm in, I'm in, I'm in detoxing. <laughs> it's okay. But there are some um, clean um, fragrance brands. So, you know, like all is not lost, you know, and, right. and it's a journey. You know what I mean? Like same thing with like, if you decide to make changes with eating or whatever, it's not like go throw out everything. I just like to give you the information. So. Thank you. Um, fragrances are the longest at eight to 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your foundation, you can keep up to one year. Okay. So that kind of makes sense. So I just talked to Shay about having two foundations, right? So if you have that one bottle of foundation from say summer to fall, like you should probably be finished that by the end of the fall, right? And then you have the other. So like that one year span, you know, should kind of cover having, you know, you should be ready to replace it the following summer is what I'm saying. Right. Right. Yeah. Your lipstick liner and gloss is one year. So what happens when it starts to break down is the same thing that happens on our lips when it starts to break down. You know how it starts to get sticky or gooey, you know, or really, really dry if it's a matte, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. lipstick or whatever. That's what's going to happen when you try to put it on. And sometimes if you try to put it on and it's really, really dry, it'll break off. And trust me, that'll be the day that you have on cream or white and it's going to get all over your clothes. No. So I recommend you, you know, replace it. Your brow pencil and your eyeliner one year. Okay. Um, so you always want to have one of those um, sharpeners right? So that you can sharpen it because you want to keep that fresh. Okay. What about the, the, um, the dip powder for the eyebrows, like the dip, the pomade? Oh, okay. Cause it lasts kind of long. Cause I have, I still have, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how, how long, how long have you had yours? Um, I probably had mine about a year. Cause it's still, and you full, still, and it's still full, yeah. And it's still, you know, the consistency is still there. Yeah. It still goes on. Right. I just, yeah. So generally speaking, things that go near your eyes are a little, you know, the expiration dates are shorter time. Um, they didn't have one for the, the dip powder for that. But I would venture to say, um, this is what I tell women, smell it when you get it, like when you first open it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Um, as long as you, you know, as long as it smells the same, you know what I mean? Um, and you're not putting it near your eyes, if it's just going on your brows, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably okay to keep up to a year. Okay. Yeah. But things that go near your eyes, like your mascara, three yeah. months tops. Three months, or if it begins to smell or if you have a cold or an allergy 
flare up. Get rid oh, of it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Three months. Now, I don't wear mascara every day. I might wear it once every three to six months. Yeah. You want to get rid of it. I just wear it once and then just throw it out? We just want to get you, one to you, you just need to go ahead and get more wear out of it, Ange. <laughs> so, you know, wear it on your uncorked and cultured thing, and then you'll get more wear out of it, and then you can get rid of it in six months. I mean, in three months. <laughs> Wow. Okay. See? Yeah. So, yeah. But the only reason to think, okay, my challenge with mascara is the takeoff process. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's never comes off completely. I've always had mascara on my, you know, pillowcase, even when I put like an oil based or petroleum based, you know, makeup remover on my eye. Okay. So okay. what are you using? Don't tell, don't say Vaseline. No, I'm using... <laughs> No, I'm using Aqua Four. Okay, no. So mm. what you need is an eye, an an oil based eye makeup remover, and those can be used twofold. You can use that for your red lipstick and for your um, eye makeup remover. Oh, okay, so that's perfect because that's usually the two things that I can't take off, and are the two makeup things that I actually wear is like a bright lip and mascara. Yeah. You're saying I should get an eye makeup remover for that? Yeah. We have one for beauty counter. And okay. all you need is one of those little um, cotton pads. And that's what I use. It doesn't sting or anything. And I use it on my lips to take it off. So it doesn't okay. sting, you know, okay. and I also use it to take my mascara off. Okay, well, well, I'll be ordering that after today. <laughs> Even though I'm not wearing lipstick right now because of COVID, but I got a photo shoot on August 1st. <laughs> so your, um, your liquid eyeliner, three to four months, same type of deal is going, you know, close to your eyes. So you don't want to keep that long. Your um, blushes and your powders, like all those highlighters and stuff, you get a lot of run out of those you can keep those for two years right okay. um or Brushes. do not use those when you start seeing the aluminum at the bottom of it you know how you can see the bottom oh like when it hits the bottom of the container yeah yeah that oh, means that you had it too long She's all right. Got about some new highlighting it what, what, what does the aluminum do does the aluminum do something well, it just means that more bacteria can get trapped under there, mm -hmm. you know, from brushes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and it also means that if, if, and a lot of women don't want to throw it away because it's just in the center and they have all this product around here, right? So what mm -hmm. that means is that you're using your product improperly. So when you use your product, right, make sure that you're using it all around. Don't just dip in the center of it. You want to use all around that circle mm. so that you don't just have that center dip in there because you're, you know, you're kind of wasting money because you have to replace it sooner. And then what also happens is it begins to crumble. Right. And then once it begins to crumble, then it's going to be all in your makeup bag and all over everything. And then it's not sanitary anymore. So I always tell people just get rid of it when you start seeing that you know, that silver at the bottom. So what about makeup brushes, like uh, the br brushes that you use for the powder, for the blushes? Yeah. Like how often should those be replaced and or cleaned? Okay, so I recommend you clean your brushes once a week, okay? Because you're only using them on yourself, all right? Now, I have a little friend I'm gonna introdu introduce you guys to. I found her at Costco. Oh, it's a makeup brush uh, cleaner? Yeah. Cleaner and dryer. I was thinking about investing in one of those too. Let me tell you, this little baby is $19. So you see how the um, brush is down in the liquid? Mm -hmm. Okay. It literally cleans everything off. And then you see on this side where the brush is like out of the liquid. Mm -hmm. 
the brush is dry when it comes out all the way dry hmm. and for me working at cnn like before covid i was doing like 25 people a day i promise you i'm not exaggerating so obviously i have several sets of brushes but i don't have time to stand there you know and wait for them to dry you know what i mean so the good thing about this is that you can put any cleaner in it you want you don't have to just use their their cleaner and it works so nicely now the reason this one isn't open is because the first one i bought our 16 year old daughter took it <laughs> and she cleaned all my brushes and like i have brushes that are like white bristles if you can see that and are back to white they're white white bristles mm -hmm. and all my white bristle brushes are back to white like gray from, from that contraption from this contraption is this i need one of those you need one you have you have is the cleaning solution included because i'm like and there is a, um, there is a cleaning solution included but you'll have to like um purchase another one and you can go on a um, amazon and you can buy a solution called parian spirit um or you can buy cinema secrets those are two those are really recommendations nice. yeah mm -hmm. so anyway you should clean your brushes once a week and i recommend in you know investing in the brushes that you need so i don't recommend you go out necessarily and buy a set of brushes mm -hmm. look at what you need for your makeup and what you use and buy those brushes now if you find that you really need an entire set then buy a set but if you're like oh well i mainly just use you know i just need a powder brush and a blush brush i don't even really use um you know shadow don't go buy shadow brushes buy the shadow brushes when you need them you know yeah. um buy good brushes because what you don't want is for the the hairs to start coming out as soon as you start using them or well, how long does a good brush last i mean like how a often good brush will last you for years i had a chanel brush that lasted me for 11 years wow mm -hmm. right yeah <laughs> Okay then. Eleven years. I, yeah. So um, right now, my favorite brushes. I love Makeup Forever brushes um, for what I do at work. My personal brushes are all beauty counter brushes, and those are the brushes that I recommend to my clients because they're white bristles, and I like my clients to see how much product that they're actually putting on the brush. Because that way, you know, you can kind of see before you put it on your face. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And they feel good too. And what kind of bristles are they? Um, do you know? Uh hmm. I can oh. find that out. Okay, I'm no sorry. worries. No worries. Um, I forget. I've known and I forgot. I'm sorry. Um your um, your eyeshadow, three to six months, same deal on your eyes. So you're going to limit that. One thing that I do recommend to clients is, you know, use a palette when you can, because when you have all these different containers of shadows, you're never going to use it. You know, if you're rushing, you know, mm -hmm. opening all of those, it's not going to happen, you know? So if you can get a palette of shadows or you can make your own palette, you know, um, you can take the, the shadow out and just put it in a palette for yourself. Um, your nail polish, one to two years. And as long as it's not hanging out in the sun, you know, you may even get a little longer than that, but probably no more than two years. So what about um, the women that like to change their polish every week? Huh? <laughs> The women that like to change their polish every week. Like, you know, they don't want to wear the same color too often. Well, I mean, I'm just saying their their bottles of polish will last them, you know. I mean, their pot their bottles of polish will probably last them six months. So they'll be good. Okay. You know? 
So like when polishes, I had like a whole bunch of nail polishes I had like to throw out. When they separate, that means they're just no good. Yep. That means they're they're gone. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And gel eyeliner, same thing. Well, two months because that is like really in your eyes. And cream blush, 12 to 18 months. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And do not leave your makeup in the car. That's me. Will help. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that's me that's all day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I keep it in the glove compartment for when I'm on the go. <laughs> oh, yeah. It will melt. So how do you suggest us like traveling with the makeup? Because I take like, honestly, I don't buy like travel kits. So everything comes with me. I don't care how big the palette is. <laughs> like, like I bring it with me. It's in the car. It's in the so when you say travel, do you mean like travel out of state or just when you're going to work and stuff? It lives in the car. Like I should goes. book a ticket. <laughs> like I literally okay. have just a bag for just makeup and that's got to be my carry on or my personal or whatever I'm catching the Like, Yeah. I mean, keep it in your purse. Just don't leave it in your car because all of your investment is, you know, because some because some shadows have like an oil base to them, even though they look like a powder. Some of them do have oil in them. So, you know, they will kind of cook in the heat or, you know, like really cold weather will affect them, too. And, you know, I would try to buy smaller palettes. So even if it's a larger palette, like you might see it and it's a lot of colors on there, you know, like try to buy a smaller palette, like a more quality palette, but it's smaller. And then just, you know, you kind of know, like, you know how you switch out your clothes for the summer or the winter or whatever. Maybe you're not wearing those colors in the summertime, you know. Well, this is this is the time of the segment where we're going to pull out those makeup bags. I mean, we only got five or ten minutes left, so let's start. Let's get to the makeup bag clean out. Yes, I want to, I want to see your makeup bag, Serena. Come on, I downsize. This is me downsizing, like literally. This is me downsizing. Okay. <laughs> No, I didn't bring any makeup. I'm not going to. You <laughs> have a lot of makeup. These are my bags. <laughs> I didn't bring, I left my makeup bag in a room, but it only has lipstick in it anyway. So, this is my but bag. I'm not throwing my makeup out. Okay. <laughs> so, based on what we talked about, foundation, who has foundation that you know is just, it's time to go? It's been in the air, it's, or either it's not the right color, you know. This <laughs> It's not the right color, it's but I'm mixing right color. Color. Okay, so is it a thing, right? So I have a summer color. It was my last summer summer color, because it's not my this summer color because of quarantine. Mm -hmm. So I try to mix it with concealer because I'm trying to get my money's worth. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, if I do like concealer on the inside and then like just kind of mix it out and blend it out, but do you need all that? I want it. And then so like right now <laughs> in my hand. I want it. But <laughs> it's a pumper. And I mean, I guess it's because I'm trying to make a switch from like designer to like drug store. So like it could be more affordable. <laughs> I understand. And it's like, I like it. Cause I'm not, I don't do dewy faces and it makes me look like dewy when I wear it. Okay. Okay, throw it away. Is that, is that what you said? I, I, look, I'm not going to force anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm just here for information. What about you, Serena? What you got? So I have this foundation. I don't remember when I bought it, but I don't think it's, it might have been a year. You want to take out the box? My Estee Lauder. Okay. <laughs> do you, how often do you use it? I When I, well, before COVID, I was going out a lot. So I was using it very frequently. Okay. I got like a little drizzle left in here. So it's probably about time for a new one. Yeah. Yeah. So we okay. So just set it to the side. <laughs> okay. Set it to the side. What yeah. about red lipsticks? Anybody have red or like deep colored lips 
lipsticks, deep pink lipsticks in their bags. I did have a friend that I, that's probably no good. <laughs> Those, those you can replace and get clean lipstick colors. Like you could, you could like do a clean swap. That's what I suggest. Look What's at that, that all your reds down there, Destiny. <laughs> it's a lot. It's reds and dark browns and pinks and all types of stuff in here. I mean, I love your collection, but I think if you open them, You'll probably, you'll know like which ones you need to, you know, like how long have you had them? Have you had them over a year? Like, did you have that last summer going into the fall? It's such a pretty red, Misha. If you see it when it's on. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> but no, you're right. I've had, I've. I've had these for a while. Yeah. So those are the things you want to look at. Um, what about glosses? I know Serena has a lot of glosses in the box because she's looking too serious. My glosses are in my purse because I keep them in my little travel bag in my purse, but all my all my <laughs> glosses. <laughs> and what about Shay? What you got, Shay? I don't have I, I don't have glosses. Because I don't it's it's all the same right here, but I don't oh, hold up, hold up, Shay. Don't no, uh -uh. that was Baby, don't do that, Shay. Come on, bring it back in frame. Let's see. Let's see. She said she's not gonna say you didn't force me either. This is like become an intervention. I don't use gloss anymore because I'm like obsessed with these like Vaseline thingies now. Like just that because it looks like really glossy, and then I put like on like a lip liner and smudge it until it looks like something nice <laughs> okay oh, okay i just want to get you to the point where what you have does what you need it to do so you don't have to do so much work let's go to the brushes then because <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the brushes because <laughs> i'm I, like i have too many and so i just be like well this was dirty so i'll just use this one while i'm doing my face <laughs> so, i feel okay. that especially when i don't feel like cleaning i might be like I could use this one instead. <laughs> All right. So what about um I just got one brush? So I only use I use one brush for all things. See, so you have literally blonde bronzer and blush like everywhere. When you put your stuff on Ange. Uh, I, okay, yeah. so this is what I have because I don't have I don't think I have blush. I have okay. um studio fix and a concealer stick. Okay. Me. Okay. All right. So, um, who has mascara that you know is old? Because y'all need to just get rid of that. I'm throwing mine out tonight I, after I, this. I bought okay. a new one today that I, 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 was, I used. I bought a new one today. So, what's okay. a good mascara? Because I know everybody, let me see. Everybody, Maybelline, everybody's told me over the years this one is a good one. I've had, uh, um, a Giorgio Armani one that my cousin Darius gift gifted me. And then I had um, this one from, it was like called like Two Hot. Two, two Face. Two Face. Yeah, two face. I, I use them. I like their mask. Oh. They have one called Better Than Sex. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> it's really nice. I like that one. Okay. So um, let me just tell you this. If you want to go safe, then you want to find a safe mascara because mascara is made out of coal tar. Like what people be dying when they go into mines? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Who's that coal tar? Yeah. Okay. Like we be grilling our food with coal. tar can you take before we get sick is what we're trying to find out. <laughs> Coal tar is what mascara is made out of. Oh wow! I did not know All that. mascara is made out of that. Yep. So they there are you know there are um, safe brands of um, mascara. Obviously, Beauty Counter has one. Um, there are other brands that are safe. I mean, obviously, I'm going to tell you about the Beauty Counter one because that's the one that I have experience with. 
Um, but I am also here to tell you, you know, not just to scare you, but just to let you know, like, you know, a lot of women have hormone disruptors and other things going on within their body because of the things that are in our products. And it's mainly, you know, us in the richest country in the world, because in Europe, they ban all these other ingredients in their products, but here all of our stuff is unregulated. So the last time that they changed something here for us was 1938. Damn. So when our parents, when our grandparents our grandparents was born yeah so say for instance if you went to get a vino lotion a vino right if you went and got that here it would be different if you got it in the uk because they have banned so many other ingredients in the you know that go in their products right right yeah wow. so Shay had to walk off to be aware of <laughs> because you know, like the deal. Here's the deal. Like, you just want your your mask, your your lashes to look good. You know what I mean? Like, do you really have any brand loyalty to Armani? Like, do you you know what I'm saying? Like, it it gets to a point of okay, do I really want to put coal tar on me, or do I just want my lashes to look good? Right. Yeah. And that's what it kind of comes to. So, you know, like I'm that person that'll help you make that switch. You know, like for me, before I made all the switches to my cosmetics, I started making switches to what I put on my body. So instead of using all the lotions and stuff, I started using like almond oil, jojoba oil and things like that to put on my skin instead of all the stuff. Like I used to love like the the Jergen shea butter cream. Oh. Swore by yeah, that. I love that lotion. No, Palmer's. <laughs> shape. I think and Palmer's I is like, oh, I can't do without it until I found <laughs> out that it just was not good for me. Like you know? What about Palmer's? Because I've been using Palmer's and I feel like that's my magic elixir. Yeah. My um, so what you can do is you can look up on, inter, um, on the environmental working group and you could put in your product and it'll tell you based on like a one to 10, how safe your product is. So mm -hmm. I say like, if you're between a one and a four, you're good. You know, it's not about perfection. It's about progress. That's what I always tell people. Like, don't get sick about it, trying to be perfect about it. Just, you know, make the progression, make the small changes, make the small steps. And you have to determine what's important to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that is like a really good source of information for you. And oh, and the other thing that I did was I stopped using antiperspirant. So I use deodorant instead. Mm -hmm. And I sweat when I, you know, like I get hot and all that other kind of stuff when I'm doing hair and, you know, I get really heated um, when I'm working at CNN and I do not smell. So you have to detox your body first because antiperspirant basically clogs and closes up all your pores. So that's why one day of not using it, you know, or half a day of not using it, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? I can't live without antiperspirant. But once you unclog all those pores, then you don't have that issue anymore. And there's several different, you know, deodorants out. So you can kind of figure out which one is good for you. But like, that's a known carcinogen. So I was like, well, I'm not going to help myself to, you know, possibly get cancer or something like that. So um, I, you know, did the detox and it took me like a week and I just did it over like a long weekend. And I just took some days off. I was like, oh, I'm going to be off. I'm going to be home. And I use like our charcoal bar and our charcoal mask. And I just did the detox and I use like this crystal thing that doesn't have a, a scent to it or anything. And, and I'm fine. I've had a friend, I had a, I have a friend who uses limes as deodorant. Mm -hmm. Lime, like lime the fruit. Like, yeah, she yeah. cuts up and, and she like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope that lasts her for a while. Yeah. My sister was just telling me about that yesterday. Look into that. 
Mm-hmm. Because me and Destiny, we both know a little bit about a detox or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about limes. I'm, I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah, you let me know. I'll try it this week while you're here. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's the perfect time to do it now. We're in COVID. We're not out as much. So, you know, you can kind of experiment with it and just kind of see, you know, mm-hmm. how long it takes you and just yeah. just do it. Yeah. Well, I know we're um, we're a little over time, um, Misha, but I know that you also have you're offering 20 percent off. So. Yes. Your new yes. new people that may be interested in learning more about Beauty Counter, learning more about the products you're suggesting today. Yeah. So, um, you know, th- let us know what is this twenty percent off um, offer that you have today. So we are having a promo for twenty percent off as long as you are a new client to Beauty Counter. Um, for your first order, you will get twenty percent off. And you can contact me directly and I can give you, you know, I can kind of take you through and um, just show you some favorites or, you know, maybe customize a skincare routine for you or show you different lipsticks or whatever you're interested in. And I just say take advantage of it because that's like a one time deal to get that promo. Awesome. 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 So before we wrap things up. I just want to kind of like go around Robin and see if anybody has any like final questions um, for Misha or any thoughts or feedback from today's suggestion. And I'm also looking for questions in the comment box. If anyone in the audience is tuned in, has any questions. In this short amount of time, I definitely learned a lot and I could be my life together. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what we want, right, Misha? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't promise that I'm gonna throw all my lipsticks away. It's okay. But I'll I'll, I'll give you like two or three. I, I'm gonna find two. That's or three. a start. <laughs> that is a wonderful start. Wonderful, Shay. I'm thinking. She said she's not gonna pressure me. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely the mascara though. That's that's. Oh, that's yeah, I think the mascara hit me kind of hard too because I always use it like a couple of times. That's why I wear lashes. I just take the oh. mascara and just do my bottoms. I wear, I wear lashes. So the lashes is a substitution. Yep. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. I have a tight line. I put it on my waterline and everything. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to give like a vibe and I'm harming myself. I'm mm hmm. And we also have products for men, too. So, you know, like for your brothers, family members, significant others, you know, you know, men need help, too. So absolutely. They got to have that exposure. Yeah, we got to expose them. So if you guys want, uh, you're interested in connecting with Misha, here's her website her phone number, her Instagram, as well as her shopping link. So if you want to see some of the beauty counter products that she has to offer, please check out her shopping link um, right there. I mean, of course, Misha, would you prefer for people to reach out to you directly first before if they are interested or should they just go straight to your 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 your, your shopping link? Um, they can go directly there if they if they like. I mean, everything is is really you know, self-explanatory. Sometimes women like to just kind of go on, you know, go and explore the page themselves. But I'm also here if they kind of get there and they have a question, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm readily available and willing to, you know, kind of help you through it. So whatever you like, whatever you're most comfortable, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, wonderful. Well, just before we leave, I just want to make sure everybody spreads the love, like, you know, make sure you follow Uncork and Cultured on Instagram, Facebook, as well as YouTube. You know, talk to your family, talk to your friends, people that you know that enjoy wine. Invite them to join our Facebook group, as well as, you know, just like our official page. You know, if this video really, if you learned something from today's video, share it and repost it on your timeline, as well as in groups that you may be a a member of, because this is, you know, we got to spread the wealth at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, tag us, you know, tag, tag Uncorked and culture so we can comment, we can engage, use our hashtag. And of course, you know, we're all wine lovers here, right? I mean, Serena, this is 
You're not a I'm wine a lover. You're a, a, beginning. Be, a wine beginner. <laughs> but welcome to the club. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and um and Shay, welcome because this is my first time meeting you. So welcome. And hopefully yeah. I'll be able to see you before you head back to Chicago. Yeah, I'm gonna be here for some time. So you definitely want to see me before I head back to Chicago. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And and just if anybody wants to like keep in touch with me, hit me up on Instagram. I'm always available. You know, I just love doing this. I love creating this space and I love to be able to bring people that I know and I care about here with me. <laughs> this is just the beginning. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Misha. You've been thank great. You so much education. I've, I didn't know what I was going to learn today. And you really kind of like exceeded my expectations. Like you also made me have to pretty much throw away most of the stuff that I have in my wake bag. But, you know. Okay. <laughs> Look, we can do it step by step. I don't need it right away. So I can just, like you said, do it step by step. Yep. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for having us. For having uh, nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you too, ladies. Well. All right. All right, y'all. Right. Anybody else who is with us, thank you so much. And we have a good evening. And I'll see you next week. Same time, same bad channel. <laughs> <laughs>